chapter two, I will be honest with you, it's not my favorite chapter, and it probably won't be your favorite, but we have to do it. Um, if you have older brothers and sisters, you might have heard them curse this chapter uh, in the word proof, if you refer to that. Oh. Yeah, yeah not, not my favorite thing, but you know what? It's part of math, and it's something that we need to understand, and I have every confidence that you can be able to do it. I really do. Um, and with all the common core stuff that you guys have done, even though we're not doing common core anymore, I think you might be better at it, because it's a lot of explaining it. Trying to understand why and looking for what's coming down the road, and I think you can do it. And, it. and it might be hard, but there's nothing wrong with hard, okay? There's nothing wrong with, with working hard to achieve something because you can't just quit what you're doing with the first bump in the road to get it, okay? You gotta keep at it. Um, Alright, so today we're talking about deductive reasoning and conjecture. A conjecture is an educated guess based on known information. What do we call that in science? A hypothesis. hypothesis, okay? In science, that a but in math, we call it a conjecture, and that's what I want you to call it, because in math, a hypothesis is something else that we'll learn about on uh, Monday or Tuesday. Okay, now, uh, inductive reasoning is reasoning that uses a number of specific examples to arrive at a plausible generalization or prediction. So we, we, make, we use inductive reasoning to make a conjecture. And we look at like some situations. For example, let's say that mom or dad comes home, and you're at home at the usual time, and you're, you're uh, wrapped up in a blanket, lying on the couch, or in your bed, all the lights are off, no music, no TV, and there's a can of Sprite sitting next to where you're laying down in a trash can, maybe right next to the uh, couch or your bed, whatever. What might they think? That you're sick, probably. I mean, they could think some other things, but they might think that you're sick. Um, and so that's conjecture. Now, it could be true, it could be false. Okay? How about this situation? Let's say that you're at the mall or you're at a ball game or whatever, and um, you see somebody and you call their name. Keep walking. Call their name again. Keep walking. Call their name a third time really loud and they just keep walking. What might you think? They're ignoring you. They're ignoring you. They don't like you. Okay, they're trying to talk. Okay. What else might they think? There could be something else. That's not them. That maybe you're calling the wrong person. Okay. What else? What might you have in? Headphones. You can have headphones in, or maybe you just don't hear well, especially if there's you know background noise or something. So there's a lot of things that that, that could be true. A lot of conjectures that you could make. Okay, based on that example. Okay. So looking at those examples, that's using inductive reasoning to come with, uh, with the conjecture that maybe they just don't like you, they don't want to talk to you, okay? All right, so that's what we're gonna do, is we're gonna look at some information and we are gonna come up with a conjecture, okay? A conjecture sometimes is a number, it is sometimes a statement, um, typically not a picture, every once in a while it's a picture, if you're working with a, a series of pictures that make a pattern, uh, Okay, so let's look at this first one. Make a conjecture about the next number based on the pattern. What's happening? Uh, Instead of writing down that big long sentence. 
Anybody think that? Okay. What is they in grammar? Huh? A pronoun, right? Okay. In that, pronouns are not allowed. Okay? So you're not allowed to use pronouns. You can't just say they are collinear or they are whatever. I need to know who they is. Okay? You want to be specific and rename what it is that you're talking about. Okay? So, um, if it says the sum of two even numbers, then you would say the sum of two <coughs> even numbers will always be even. Okay, so that would be my conjecture. Now remember, a conjecture can be true or false. That one's probably true. Um, it's true. Uh, okay, sometimes you're given a description and you need to draw a picture, but the picture is not your conjecture. The picture just helps you make the conjecture, okay? All right. Uh, right, QT is an angle bisector of angle PQR. All right, so we've got angle PQR. And then it says, right, QT is an angle bisector. Where would I put that? Right through the, the vertex, right through the middle, right? Just like that? Okay, so there's a picture that is showing kind of what they're talking about there. What can I get from the fact that QT is the angle bisector of PQR. Right. So it splits it in half. Okay, it splits or it, it makes in it into two congruent angles. Okay, it makes it into two congruent angles. So how would I say that mathematically? What are my two angles? PQT is congruent to PQR. Alright, good. Angle PQT is congruent to angle PQR. Good. Okay, could I say anything else about it? Because you can have more than one conjecture. Brandy. Well, not necessarily. Because it's really just referring, when you have an angle bisector, it doesn't do anything <coughs> to the segment itself. It only does it to the angle. Okay? It's a good thought, though. its relationship to the whole angle. It's half of it, right? So could I say when we talk about the measure of angle, we put a little in the front. The measure of angle PQT is half the measure of the big angle, which is PQR. And the measure of PQT is half the measure of angle PQR. Alright, so there is another one. Some people like to say things like PQT and angle TQR are adjacent. Is that true? Yes, it's true. Okay. Not a great conjecture because probably nothing really could come from that. Maybe it could, but it wouldn't be false. Uh, some one person in my uh, one person my, one of my hours said that PQT is acute. Is that true? Will PQT always be acute? Probably, unless it was a straight angle, and then it would be right. But any other time it would create, you know, when you do that angle bisector, it's going to create two acute angles, isn't it? Unless it, unless it's a straight angle. All right, so let's look at the next example. So the table at the right shows the price of postage for the years 1982 to 09. Make a statistical graph that best displays the data. Okay, so we have a, a table over here, and it's it, it's working with the, the year and then the rate of postage in cents. And so I want to make a graph for this, all right? What's going to go along my x, uh, x axis and my y axis? Yes. Okay, the x axis is the years, and this right here is going to be the rate, which is cents. Which one's my dependent variable, which, my, which one's my independent variable? Independent is the year and the dependent is the rate. Good. Okay, so it looks like they're going in about five year increments. So this right here would be 82, and then this is 87, 92, 97, 02, 07. Then he goes to 09, but I'm going to go ahead and do uh, 12. What's the 
go along the y axis, it's our skin for our face. Um, it's probably the skin. Okay, so in 82, it's 20 cents, so we're going to graph that. In 87, it's 22, about right there. In 92, it's 29. In 97, it's 32, it's about right there. In 02, it's 37. And in 07, it's... 41, and then in 09, 44. Okay, so what do we think, there's my system data, what do we think the postage rate might be in 15? This would be about right here. What do you think it would be? Garrett, what do you think? 49, 50 cents, something like that. Continue over time. You think it'll keep increasing over time? What is what is driving? What's happening with our postal service right now? Yes. Okay, I can see that. Uh, yeah, but probably what is happening to the postal service? Are we using them as much? No, because of technology, right? We're sending everything by email and by fax. So we're really not using it as much, so they're having to charge us more, okay? And even talked about, you know, not delivering mail on Saturdays and those kinds of things. I don't know if that'll ever happen, but anyway. So I would think, yes, and, and we, we could contribute it to maybe inflation or lack of use, okay? Um, so I would say, um, you think it would continue over time? Yes. Um, it would continue increase uh, due to inflation or lack of use. She might just wake up and say, hey, what's going on? And if she takes your temperature and you're running a fever, then it confirms her, con her conjecture, right? But if she wakes, you know, wakes you up, you have no temperature, and you say, mom, I'm just really tired. I'm just, just tired. And so then that would be a counterexample. You know, they told you she had, they stayed up late, left, uh, late last night or whatever. That would be a counterexample. Um, back to the one where, well, here's a good one. All coins are silver. Counterexample would be what? Right. Okay, so that's a counter example. Back to the one where you thought that they were being ignored and you were, they didn't like you anymore. Okay, let's say you come back 10 years at your 10 year reunion and you're talking to that person and they're all, you know, really friendly and you know, you've harbored all this good news because they ignored you at the football game or at the movies or the mall or wherever. And you come to find out that they were just had headphones in their ear, they weren't really ignoring you. That'd be a counter example to your conjecture, wouldn't it? Okay, that's kind of extreme, but definitely a possibility. Um, some people do harbor things that are wrong, and then years later they find out that what they thought really wasn't the case. Um, happens on TV shows all the time, doesn't it? Is that what half the TV shows are, is assuming something that's not true? Have you ever noticed that? Okay. Um, all right, so when we have a problem like this, what they're going to do is they're going to give you some information. The given information is fact. It is true. It's the gospel. It's known for sure. Okay? You know that. Then it's going to make a conjecture. Now, that conjecture could be true or false, okay? And your job is going to be to determine, is this true? Is this false? If it's false, you've got to come up with a counterexample, okay? All right. Um, so we are given that AB is congruent to BC. The conjecture is that B is the midpoint of AC. What do you think? True. True. How many people think it's true? Raise your hand. Anybody think false? Stop. What do you want? 
why do you need space? Two lines. Okay. All right, would those two lines have to be connected? Yes, because they both have B in it, right? Most of you probably thought this. The first thing that popped in your mind was probably something like this, right? Is that what most of you thought? Okay, that's what I thought first, too. But it doesn't say that A, B, and C have to be collinear. It could look like this. You could have A, you could have B, you could have C, and you could have a situation like that, okay? Or it could be this thought, it could be, you could make it into a triangle, it could be isosceles. Um, you can make it into a quadrilateral root shape, really. Um, so, uh, you know, here's my, and you can use this picture with your right as a counterexample. You could also describe it, and you could say, um, no, it is or false. You can say false. Uh, a, B, and C could be non collinear and really probably just take it along with the picture would be a really good counter example, okay? We could just have the picture, but the statement with the picture is probably better. All right. Here's another one. Uh, if you have an angle one and angle two are right angles, conjecture, angle one and angle two are congruent. What do you think? What does it mean to be right? Hear it. Okay, go ahead. What were you going to say? You think it's, you think it's true? Yeah. Yes, you're right. It is true. Okay. What does it mean to be right? They equal 90 degrees. And so if they both equal 90 degrees, they have the same measure. And if they have the same measure, they are congruent, right? So the answer here would be true. Sometimes they ask you to explain the true ones and sometimes they don't. A lot of times when you're trying to justify a true one, you can go back to a definition or a theorem and use that. And really what we've done here is we've used the definition of what a right angle is. We've also used the definition of what it means to be congruent. To be congruent, you have to have the same measure and vice versa. Okay. All right, last one. Given angle three and angle four are supplementary, Conjecture angle three and angle four are a linear pair. What do you think? True or false? Think false? You may think true. False is the correct answer. Okay. They could be a linear pair, correct? They could be a linear pair if they're supplementary, but do they necessarily have to be adjacent? You could have angle three here that measures 120 degrees, and angle four here that measures. Uh, and those are supplementary but non-adjacent. Okay? And this picture would be sufficient. A false statement. Angle 3 and angle 4 uh, can be supplementary and non-adjacent. Inductive reasoning to come up with what we call a, an educated guess, uh, a generalization, and a prediction. Okay? Uh, it can be true or false. And remember, it's a statement, it's a number, it's a congruent statement, it's some kind of math statement, but it's not simply a picture. Okay? It could possibly be, but not simply a picture. Okay? Um, then, remember, the conjecture can be true or false, um, and we use a counterexample to show if it's true or false. And it can be a picture, it can be a statement, it can be a definition, it can be a lot of different things. Now, what if they gave me, back to this one here, what if they gave me just three points, like 
point A is whatever, point B is whatever, point C is whatever. What should I do? Graph it, okay? So let's say I graph point A here, and I graph point B here, and I graph point C there, okay? So it gave me the three points, I graphed it. What would my conjecture be? Okay, they could be vertices, but would we use the word they? No, we would say points A, B, and C are vertices of a triangle. That's pretty good, okay? You're assuming that you would connect the points when you do that, but I'd probably take that, okay? Maybe the less specific would be points A, B, and C are what? Non-collinear, okay? So that would be a good conjecture. Uh, points A, B, and C are non-collinear. And again, you want to try to make conjecture this true. Now, you don't always know whether sometimes through further investigation you determine that it's false. But um, anyway, that's what you want to do. Did I tell you about my professor from Greece? Did say that? I had a professor from Greece. His name was Dr. Juros. And his job was to work in a math think tank. That was his job every day. He would go, he would sit, and he would work math theory, which is a little bit of math than what we're normally used to doing. And he did that all day long. He tried to prove and disprove theory all day. And I think that'd be really boring to me. Have you seen the movie of Triple Mind? Anybody seen it with uh, Russell Crowe? It's a really good movie. It's about this guy who has got schizophrenia, but he, he's going to Harvard or Yale, one of those, and he um, has to come up with an original idea. And he spends the whole movie trying to come up with this, and he's, he ends up kind of going crazy a little bit, but he came up with an original idea. He used to write on the windows in the library. He would write in the mirrors in the bathroom. He would just write all this math theory. He was trying to come up with original ideas. He would see birds, and he would come up with a theory on how the birds would congregate and migrate and do all this kind of stuff. I mean, it was, it was kind of crazy the way he did it. And um, anyway, he does come up with this original idea, and our economic system today is based on what he came up with. Um, he won the Nobel Peace Prize. And uh, anyway, it's a good movie. I used to show it, but it's PG-13. It's got kind of one sketchy scene in it. Uh, but anyway, uh, good movie. Uh, good movie if you want to watch it sometime. All right. Um, you guys, again, I've got a worksheet for you.